Collecting plushes is one of my favorite hobbies. Specifically video game and anime related plushes, and occasional YouTube plushes. Today, I'd like to address the more obscure video game plushes. Some of you may have heard the ones like Yax or Bubsy, as they are infamous for their rarity. However, I have come across some you are likely unaware of. I have to ask, why hasn't anyone discussed this? There are quite a few hardly anyone's talked about. Please do note that some information I give is speculation as info on some of these plushes is hard to find. For this video, I set a few ground rules. Each plush in question has to originate from a video game, otherwise I will not include it. The plush has to come from an obscure franchise, not a popular one like Super Mario Bros. or Sonic the Hedgehog. With that said, get ready to learn the world of obscure video game plushes. It's going to be a long ride. Did you know there was a video game console called the Turbo Graphics? Neither did I. But this console apparently had a mascot named Bonk, and Japan had plushes of some of the characters. Information for these are scarce, so I can only guess Van Presto made them, as they do appear to be made out of the same material as the Super Mario World plushes. The fact a Bonk plush exists is mind-blowing. I'd love to get my hands on one someday, but sadly, this is the only photo of their known existence. It was apparently a Yahoo Japan auction, but I'm not sure who won it. If one were to ever appear for sale outside that Yahoo Japan auction, it'll cost a pretty penny. Were these plushes for promotion? Did you win them in UFO catchers? I can only guess at this point. The 90s are known for their furry mascot platformers like Sonic the Hedgehog, Bubsy Bobcat, Oscar, Arrow the Acrobat, and Rocky Rodent. But one in particular was not a furry creature, but an Earthworm of all things. Earthworm Jim released on the Sega CD, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, and Genesis in 1994. Playmates toys create action figures, which many are aware of, but did you know there's a plush of him? Yep, Mezco Toys actually made a plush of Earthworm Jim. Sadly, the only known photos of him are at a toy fair, so this may be the only one in existence. I checked Worth Point, but nothing showed up. Like Bonk, this plush is apparently so rare that little information exists. And that is, there is a plush, and no one seems to have it. What a shame. Mezco Toys released the figure, which is cool, but why not the plush? That's quite a mystery. Tens of thousands of video games exist, so it's no surprise many fall into obscurity, like Soccer Kid. Soccer Kid is a platform video game created by UK-based developer Chrysalis, and released in 1993 for the Commodore Amiga, 1994 for the Super Nintendo, PC, Amiga CD32, and 3D Interactive Multiplayer. Its title for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in the United States, The Adventures of Kid Cleats. Thanks, Wikipedia! Or is it Wekpidea? I've never heard of this game until now, but by purchasing the game, you also got a plush of Soccer Kid himself. Man, this plush reminds me of the Acme Mario plushes from the 80s, and I love it. It can sell from $30 to perhaps $100. A seller I found located in the UK had a bunch of them at the price of $30, including a copy of the game without the jewel case. I don't think even Brett, known as the Horror Master or Nightram56, has this plush, but I do, thanks to the seller Simple Simon1966 for giving me a 37% discount on the plush. I cannot believe I'm the first to ever make a video regarding this odd looking plush, and I'm a proud owner of one. I have to say, it's smaller than I thought, but I love it. His hair is soft, his pose looks cool, and there's no damage unless you count a few fuzzies. Under a shirt, he has a white shirt made of nylon. What I found odd was this plastic loop on his head. I wonder why it's there. Do these hang in stores? Who knows? I will do a review on this plush in the near future, don't you worry. Now let's get into more awesome, weird, and obscure plushes. Back 
Back in the 2000s, you had your choice of Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft. Many pick Nintendo, like yours truly, or Sony, and have hardly bothered with Microsoft as Nintendo and Sony had more to offer. But do not neglect the Xbox, as it did offer a rare and valuable item from a game called Voodoo Vince. This plush of him was a promotional item. When you purchased the game, you got this cute little plush of the character. I never heard of Voodoo Vince until Nitro Red reviewed the game. Apparently this is an extremely rare and expensive plush rounding around two to three hundred dollars. What? It's a really nice looking plush too. The attention to detail in this guy is amazing. The patches and stitching and all shows that a lot of work went into this. Sadly, I don't think the price tag on this plush is worth it at all, but considering its obscurity and rarity, it's no surprise a plush like this is expensive. I heard the game is good, but sadly I cannot play it as it's not playable on the Xbox 360. If you have this plush, feel proud about it and hang on to it, unless you want to sell it and make a few hundred bucks. The bad guys with dread, Vince, the voodoo doll. The Sony PlayStation had all kinds of mascot platformers like Gex, Punky Skunk, Mort the Chicken, and Croc. Croc is the guy we'll be looking at because he's got a plush. That's right, this little cutie has a plush. I found this on a Croc fan page where some people were talking about a plush of Croc. The first person said, I read on the random facts page that there was a four foot Croc plushie given out. Also as a promotion Toys R Us sold some, does anyone know if there are any Crocs left anywhere on the internet or in any stores, etc? I know it was released a long time ago, but I thought if anyone knew, you guys would. A four foot Croc plush? Imagine that! Let's read the reply. I can't say I know anything about Toys R Us selling them in any country, but I do know that several sources gave away small Croc plushes during various promotions, mainly for Croc 2, which is odd as the ones that have tags, and not all of them actually do have tags, for some reason have the Croc Legend of the Gabos logo on them and not Croc 2. So, 4 foot tall one is currently not the only Croc plush in existence. Seen to recall the UK official PlayStation magazine giving a small one away with a croc backpack once as well. It may also be possible that some countries used them as pre-order incentives, but I really don't know for sure on that one. I think your best bet would be to search eBay with terms such as croc plush, croc promo, or croc promotional, and so on, and eventually you might find one with any luck. eBay's alert system which will send you an email whenever new items show up under a particular search term you've saved. Could be a big help here. You'll need an account with them to use that feature though, as far as I'm aware. I have one of the small ones myself which I was given by the chaps at Agronaut Software themselves. I'll provide a couple of views of him below. No folks, he's not for sale. He's about the height of a coke can and spends his time guarding my desk from Dantonus. Wish you the best of luck in finding one, Ratchy Croc. Edit. I just had another thought right after posting, so I'll add it here. Due to the nature of promotional goods, they usually have to be produced in the runs of at least a few hundred or so. So they're not exactly close to one of a kind, which the 4 foot plush probably is. Some will surely surface eventually. This page has some interesting information in regards to the Croc plush. I'll provide a link in the description. But from what I gathered, this was given out as a freebie with the purchase of Croc in some countries, as well as a giveaway in the UK PlayStation Magazine. This plush right here may be a variant, but I'm not sure as info on the sky is unknown. But I am pleased to know that there is one on eBay for sale and it's $110, which actually did sell or was removed from eBay. I shouldn't be surprised at this point, plushes like these aren't cheap. Sellers will take advantage of how obscure an item is and sell it at a high price. But I shouldn't be pointing fingers at anyone when I clearly take advantage of the market too. Anyway, I sure do hope more info on this plush along with its variants will be known to the public soon because I don't know about you, but I'd like to see that four foot croc. Sega is notoriously known for the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise or even the likes of Super Monkey Ball and Nights into Dreams. But has anyone ever heard of Echo the Dolphin? Truth be told, I first heard of the game when Mizuki Moon released a video on her Sega Mega Drive collection, and Echo the Dolphin was one of the games she had. Did you know a plush of the dolphin exists? 
Of all things, a plush of Echo the Dolphin? Why not Alex Kidd? I'm not complaining, just curious. Echo the Dolphin isn't widely known like Alex Kidd. At first glance, it just looks like an ordinary dolphin. But when you see that embroidered Sega logo on the tail fin, you know what you're in for. Like Croc, this little guy too has a story. I'll read it from the person who owns it. I bought Echo secondhand many, many years ago. When I bought him, I was told that he was a prize from a promotion run by Burton's Biscuits, maker of wagon wheels, at the time of the game's release. Though I have no idea what the other prizes from said promotion were. I can only assume that Burton's got involved in promoting Echo the Dolphin due to the success seen by their rival, Mick Fides, after they sponsored James Pond 2, codenamed Robocod, which led to an increase in their sales. Thanks Ninja Rabbit for that info. Heck, thanks for showing this very obscure video game plush to help make this video possible. You promotion him from Burton's Biscuits? Jeez, of all places, a restaurant! I never heard of James Pond, but I sadly cannot find any photos of a plush for the guy. Spoiler alert. A further look at the plush, we have the tags. This one here says Down Imports, probably the company that manufactured them. Also a paper tag. It's sadly torn off, but it was on his right fin and it has Sega's logo on the tag with some text saying, look out for Echo. On the back, it continues saying, Hero of the Dolphin Underworld. I never played Echo the Dolphin. But now I'm curious to know if it's any good. But from what I've been told by many gamer viewers, it isn't. That aside, the price tag on this plush is unknown. We can only guess, but we may never know or even see one up for sale. <music> Mascot platformers are hit or miss. Some make it and some don't. However, I'd object to some of the more obscure ones like Gex, or in this case, Tomba. Tomba is a platform game developed by Whoopi Camp and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation. The game was initially released in Japan in December 1997 and worldwide the following year. Thanks again, Wekpidea! Tomba apparently has a plush along with Koma Pig. In Japan, when the game released in 1997, for a limited time, you can get these by purchasing the game. Later in 2012, a new plush of Tomo released in limited quantities yet again. The Tomo franchise only got two games, and that was the end of it. <laughs> we all know the game Katamari Damacy, right? Well, the same developers created a game called Loco Roco, a weird yet cute game about rolling balls into more balls. They honestly look more like fruit to me though. Anyway, a set of the Loco Roco characters in plush form was created. Sadly, no known information exists on these little guys. I can only guess they were promo items or sold for a limited time. The company that made this is also unknown, but they do clearly have tags. They were sold on Amazon, but they are no longer available. Kinda sad, really. These little guys are cute and would be fun to juggle with. If I could juggle, that is. In 1980, Atari released a popular arcade game called Centipede. To promote said game, they made this crafty looking centipede plush. Is it a plush? I don't know, but soft and official. Tax says Centipede, new and only from Atari. This is the only known photo of the item. It looks so cheap like a kid made it in art class, but it's official despite it looking more like a worm than a centipede. It is cute though with its Google eyes and felt antennas. One did sell on eBay four years ago. For how much? I'm not paying money to see how much it sold for. I could start a free trial, but they still want my credit card number. Sorry, not happening. The Completionist did a video on this game called Jumping Flash, a first-person shooter starring a rabbit. It released on the PS1 in 1995, and in Japan, there is a plush of Moo Moo to promote the game. But why does it look so sad? Oh, that's why. The poor thing is kinda damaged. That aside, 
This plush was listed for $9.95 on eBay, and the seller decided to remove it. I bet it's because they realized they have something rare and valuable. Don't blame them. But I wish Marfa was given on the item description. Other than being from Japan and it's a promo plush, that's it. End of story. You know those old snake games? No, not those snake games. The games where you control a snake and gobble up pixels? Yeah, that game got a crisp HD remake on the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. During its release, the developers on Twitter held a contest for a select few lucky winners to win a Noodle and Doodle plush. Much like the physical copies of Snake Pass, these plushes are limited in quantity. Only a handful have these adorable plushes of Noodle, and who can forget his companion Doodle? It's such a shame only a handful were made, but that's what makes these two so valuable. It'd be nice if new plushes of these guys were made in larger quantities for us unlucky ones who didn't get the limited edition Noodle and Doodle plushes. Sad to say, that may never happen. You know that game on Nintendo Switch Online called Adventures of Lolo? There are plushes of Lola and Lala, the two characters from the game. Promo items from HAL America Krika in 1990. These two little cuties are soft and rare. Their eyes are plastic and aside from being different colors, Lala has eyelashes and a bow on her head. The HAL logo is plastered on their feet and the tag says, Adventures from HAL, the Fanatic. The Fanatic must be the company that manufactured these plushies. Never heard of them till now. Sadly, no information on them exists, at least from my research. The price for these is unknown, but my guess is they're around 50 or more. I hope that's not a piece because that would round up to 100. No thank you! The Cooking Mama series started in 2006 and has had 5 games on the DS, 2 of which are on the 3DS, two on the Wii, and two spin-offs, Guarding Mama and Babysitting Mama, where you use this baby to play the game. Aside from the baby in these 3DS cart pouches, Cookie Mama herself got a plush as a promotional item for the fourth game. When you pre-ordered the game at GameStop, you got a plush as a bonus. It's rather small, but really cute and not as expensive as the others I've talked about previously. The current one up for sale has a $48 price tag, so if you're a fan of the series and have enough money to spare, I'd highly recommend you purchase the plush as it may increase in value and rarity in the future. The Cooking Mama series is slowly but surely fading to obscurity as the Overcooked series takes its place. Let's never forget Cooking Mama. The N64 era is known for many collectibles, like the Nintendo BDNA plushes. During that era, Rampage 2 got a set of promo plushes of each character, some in regular form and some in keychain form. These are incredibly rare and expensive too. Get ready to spin them big if you want these, they can range from 50 to 400 each. That's insane! Upgrade your wallet to the Giant's Wallet Skyward Sword style if you want to purchase these. Getting them all can seem like a pipe dream, but not everyone knows the worth of what they're selling. Just like the kind donor that donated Diddy and Banjo to a thrift store, and I just so happened to get them at the low price of $1.25. Keep searching, you never know until you look. The Wii era was a mixed bag for most of us. For a time, getting a Wii was hard with the stock being low, but now they're not worth much. Another game appeared on this console called Flame Smash, and if you pre-ordered the game, you got a flush. It honestly looks like it can be a Jolly Roger for some pirates in One Piece, but that's just me. Out of all the obscure plushes we've looked at so far, this one is the cheapest of the bunch. I feel bad for all who pre-ordered the game in hopes of the item increasing in value, but hey, maybe one day it will. 
It's not a bad looking plush, just not as expensive or rare as the others. Regardless, Flame Smash isn't well known, thus making it kind of obscure. In 1994, Namco released a game called Point Blank for the arcade, then later to PlayStation and DS. The franchise left behind plushes of Dr. Dan and Dr. Dawn. They kind of look like Muppets or something you see on Sesame Street. I'm not sure I'm the only one who thinks that. Anyway, last one sold roughly $13, at least Dr. Dan. The plushes look like beanies from their loose limbs and semi-flat bodies. These were, in fact, one the same machine as Clonoa alongside Pac-Man and Pinky. I find them somewhat unappealing, but that's just me. I'm not saying they're terrible, they just don't interest me. Regardless of my opinion, these guys are rare, and if I found them at a yard sale or flea market for cheap, then I'd grab them and sell them. Have you guys heard of Sonic Blast? Man. Sonic Blast Man is an odd beat-em-up developed by Taito. The game, from what I've been told, at least the first one, sucks. But the second game redeemed the franchise. Kind of. Sonic Blast Man himself looks kind of generic. Like something you would see on a throwaway Saturday morning cartoon. But of course, with Taito being a toy company as well, they made a plush of Sonic Blast Man himself. I think I like him as a plush more. He looks more iconic as a chibi robot rather than some knockoff transformer. The color scheme of Sonic Blast Man, jeez, that's kind of a mouthful, is not as bland. Personally, I think Blast would have done better as a run and gun rather than a beat em up. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The plush is made of cheap felt old Japanese plushes used to be made of in the 80s and 90s. That aside, it's not a bad plush. They range from $30 to $50, which is a bit for this plush in my opinion. Consider what it's made of. If you're into these kind of plushes, then go for it if you have the money. Unless you were a gamer who grew up in the early 90s, or a gaming fanatic like me, then you would have never heard of the likes of Jazz Jackrabbit. Sure, he does make a cameo in Fortnite, but you'd probably disregard it as some random poster. We all overlook cameos if they aren't obvious to us. Anyway, Ninja Rabbit is at it again, giving us insight on the Jazz Jack Rabbit plush by BDNA. Here's what they had to say. This is a beanie plush of Jazz Jack Rabbit, made to promote the Macintosh port of Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. Initially, they were only available when ordering the game directly from the porting house responsible for it, but they were later sold separately after stocks of the game ran out. His colors sadly aren't totally game accurate, his muzzle, belly, and tail should be lighter green rather than yellow, and his inner ears and the soles of his feet should actually be pink. But I think he's a pretty good likeness considering that these were originally intended as promotional freebies. He's in a sitting position, so it wasn't possible to take a picture of him at his full height. All of his details are present and correct, including his backpack, which even has little felt buttons stitched onto the closing flap. Of course, the backpack itself doesn't open and close, though. If the style of this plush seems familiar, it's worth noting that these were made by Benson, Dutch, and Associates. I really butchered that, didn't I? Benz is in Deutsche and Associates. Anyway, who, prior to these, also made a series of retail Nintendo beanie toys in this sort of style around 1998. Thanks again, Ninja Rabbit, for posting this. I'll provide a link to the original post. I never knew what BDNA stood for until now. It's apparently a Dutch company that made some of the most iconic gaming merch in existence. How cool is that? I'm thankful that people like Ninja Rabbit are sharing this to the world to let us know about the cool and obscure gaming merch. Do not worry, my friends, we're not done yet. There's more to come. An action-adventure game by Twisted Pixel Games, The Maw, released for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, and Microsoft Windows. Nintendo fans, you missed out. For commercial release, The Maw got a plush. 
Yes, this is not a promotional item where you get it by pre-ordering the game. It's a nice size plush from what I've been told. By the looks of it, it's got a nice soft material. I sadly did not know of its value and none of it appeared on eBay for some time. There was little no info on this plush, unfortunately. So, let's move on to the next one. Keeping up with the Twisted Pixel games, Explosion Man released on July 22nd, 2009. Oddly enough, the plush didn't release until 2010 as a promotional item. Then Miss Explosion Man got a plush a year later. They're rather odd looking characters, like they're tie dyed. At least Explosion Man. Miss Explosion Man is all pink with a bow and could be used as a slingshot. Looks like I found a new slingshot for Usopp. I'm not sure what Splosion Man does, but you can always use him as ammo. Oddly enough, none have appeared on eBay for sale, so I cannot give you the price. These are interesting plushes. If you happen to have them, let me know. I'd love to learn more about them. Like, how did you get these? Did you buy them in stores or through an event? That is a question I cannot answer. We have many exclusive titles ranging from Flame Smash to Bonsai Barber. One title by the name of Dewey's Adventure, developed by Konami, received a plush. You guessed it, you'd get after pre-ordering the game. Dewey is a water drop. What will be next? A screw? Anyway, Dewey is made of two different materials. I especially don't like the shiny material, as it's known to wear off. But it does give the water effect, I guess. The plush and game are not that expensive, both ranging from 10 to $30. Dewey is a cute little plush. If you're a collector of these obscure little plushes, I advise getting one. I will myself someday, but I kinda need to maintain financial balance. Sorry Dewey, not today. Someday, but not today. Stretch Mo, formerly known as Push Mo, was an exclusive title on the 3DS eShop. Little did I know that this little game had some merchandise ranging from a train pass holder, keychain slash phone strap, and a cute plush. These sold only in Japan from what I gathered. Sad to say, I found none of these guys being sold on eBay or anywhere else. They were being sold on Tokyo Otaku Mode site, but they're out of stock forever. A real shame to all who hadn't bought one. The fact these guys don't show up for sale anymore speaks volumes on how rare they are. But then again, I've seen obscure items show up on eBay for a cheap price, but I guess it all depends on what the item is. Perhaps Stretch Mode is one of them. <laughs> The game Tonic Trouble is not that great according to IG and a GameSpot. But what do they know? During its release, it got a plush unlike Rayman 2, which is odd as they were both published by Ubisoft. Why didn't Rayman get a plush like this? He did get one during the release of his third game, but I would have loved a Rayman plush in the style of Ed from Tonic Trouble. In all honesty, Ed looks like that weird kid from Fanboy and Chum Chum. Ew. But better. He isn't that bad of a character or plush. BNA manufactured him, which is given by not only the tag, but by the material it's made out of. I've seen all BNA plushes made of the same material for the most part. On the tag it says, get Ed free with the purchase of Tonic Trouble. That clearly tells us this plush was a freebie with the purchase of the game. I have seen this plush on eBay with other BNA plushes, but I don't remember the price it sold for unfortunately. All I know is that this is a rare plush, obviously. Is it the rarest? I do not know. Ed has some competition up ahead, though. I know, this plush has been talked about to death, but you cannot deny that Gex is a rather obscure video game character. In fact, 
I never heard of him until someone posted a plush of him on the VGMM Facebook group page. Then when Gekko 1993 mentioned Gex to me, it rang a bell and I was like, yeah, I remember seeing a plush of him on Facebook. Kind of an odd response, but it's true. I first saw Gex as a plush toy. This guy is a rare and expensive collectible. Last one I saw sold for 150 bucks. At the time of Gex 3, you could have gotten one for purchasing a game. The plush was made by a company many of us collectors are familiar with, called BDNA. Surprise, surprise! The same guys who made the Nintendo Collectibles series. It's a really nice representation of the character in plush form, standing around 9 inches tall. He sports his black suit he mainly wore in Enter the Gekko. I never saw him in the suit in Gex 3. Kind of odd. Regardless, he looks better in it. I just wish the price tag on this guy wasn't so high like most of the plushes on here. Many video game franchises died to obscurity. Like Clonoa. At first glance, he looks like a Sonic OC. But a good Sonic OC if that makes sense. The 90s were known for their dime a dozen mascot platformers. Clonoa is one that should not be overlooked. He then managed to get quite a few games over a short lifespan of 11 years. Along with two plushes, one small and one medium plush. Both are extremely rare and expensive. Ranging from two to four hundred dollars. Step aside, Gex, you've got competition. Pete Thor is one of the few lucky ones to have a Klonoa plush. I hope someday in the future, Klonoa will get the recognition it deserves. But for now, we can only hope. The Xbox era didn't have much to offer outside games like Halo, Call of Duty, and Blinks. During the release of that game, Blinks got a plush toy and dare I say it looks gorgeous. You can even pose it like the Postable Mario plushes by Toy Site. How cool is that? At the time, this plush was free with the purchase of the game, but now it may run you a few hundred bucks. It's kind of a shame this cat only got two games while the likes of Bubsy got six. Maybe it's because the second game didn't do so well? Whatever the case may be, Blinks is a hard plush to find, and many collectors like myself are after this gym. That's only a pipe dream at this point. Love him or hate him, Bubsy got a plush at the time of his second game. During the development of it, there was a drawer full of these, only for the producer to stab pencils in their heads and hang them by the neck out of hatred for the character. I wonder how many of them got destroyed, but I know that the Bubsy creator Michael Berlin has a plush of him. Game Fan Magazine featured a Bubsy plush in their collection of video game merchandise, and Jenny N, daughter of Bubsy 2 artist, Adrian Bourne, has a Bubsy plush. That's three known Bubsy plushes in existence. Some people out there genuinely loves Bubsy and would love to own a plush of him. Out of all the plushes I've talked about in this video, Bubsy is probably the more scarce because the producer of Bubsy 2 killed most of them. Chances of finding one ourselves is highly unlikely. But who knows? Maybe with the release of Paws and Fire, there will be a new and affordable Bubsy plush for all of us. To either collect and hold on to, or to stab pencils into their heads and hang them by the neck. I had a lot of fun diving headfirst into the web searching for these hidden gems. Some of these are rarely talked about or just straight up ignored. It's kind of sad really, but I'm happy that I got to bring more notoriety to these plushes, even though I'm an obscure YouTuber no one gives a crap about. So be sure to spread the word to the video game merch enthusiasts. Not about me, but about these plushes. The world must remember, Soccer Kid. With that said, I hope you enjoy this video. Stay tuned for more necessary nonsense from yours truly, Game Hedgehog. God bless, I'll see you in the next video. Out with the Yang!